Previously, we looked at part A. Now we're going to look at part B, where we assume the diodes to be ideal, and we need to find the values of I and V in the circuits here. So with this, we are going to make our first assumption. And our first assumption, we've done this in the previous one, is where we assume the diodes are either on or off. Now for this one, I'm going to assume that they are both on at the beginning. We're then going to analyze our circuit and then check our assumptions. So assuming that these are both on, that means that our D1 and D2 are both going to look like this. And we can scroll up in the notes to see this. So looking at this, we can see that if they're both on, um, we are going to have our voltage be equal to zero across them and our I has to be greater than zero. So that means the voltage across this is zero volts and the one here is zero volts, meaning that we found this V to be zero volts. Now that means the voltage at this node is going to be zero volts. We also have this ground here that is zero volts as well. And this ground is not affected by what we've done here. So I'm actually going to do that in a different color. We'll just title this as zero volts because this is ground, right? And now we can find the current that's flowing through this part. So the current flowing through here, if we use Ohm's law, is going to be equal to a one milliamp. And because of direction, we'll do a negative one milliamp, but that's purely just because of direction. Now we've looked at this side, we can look at the next side over here. So over here, we have 10 volts over this five kilo ohm resistor. So with Ohm's law, we're going to be able to say that, well, we have this I D2 and this ID2, if I can find my cursor, is going to be equal to the voltage over the resistance. So that's going to be two milliamps of current right here. And so this two milliamps of current, what it's going to do is it's going to flow through here. It's going to flow through this diode, right? And then we're going to go into this node here. And remember, this is two milliamps. That's from up here. Now from here, with the node voltage method, remember all voltages going into this node have to equal to zero. So we'll set this equal to zero. And we have two milliamps minus one milliamp. And so this, we know if it's minus, we know voltage, or sorry, not voltage, but current is flowing out of it. Well, we can see that current has to be flowing into this, right? And if we have it like this, we're going to need a another one, minus one milliamp to get it to be equal to zero. And we're not going to have that. We, with this assumption, we would assume that current is flowing in here. And with this assumption, it would be incorrect because we would have to have a positive current flowing in. So this is incorrect here. This kind of breaks this. So we're going to stop this right here. And we're going to look at it a different way. The different way that we're going to look at this is we're going to say, well, the problem was with this node right here, this D1, this was our issue. And so what we're going to do is now we're going to, and we'll call this um, two, because one, we, were, we assumed both on. Now we're just going to assume that D1 is off, D2 is on. Now using these assumptions, our D1 is going to act like an open circuit as we have here. So our voltage is going to be have to be less than zero and our current is going to equal zero. So the current across here is equal to zero. And that means we're going to have basically a short circuit. So if this is a short circuit, we don't have to worry about this because this is not part of the circuit since it's a short. So what we can do is redraw this out a little bit. We know we have our plus 10 volts here. We have our resistor here. It's five kilo ohms. And then we have to recalculate our ID2 since our previous calculation was not correct. We have a node here. It's going to go out this way into our plus minus voltage, which goes into ground. And then we have our diode right here. And so um, I'll actually draw that a little bit better. That's our diode. And this is our D2. And this is going to go like this. And then it's going to go into our B right here. Now, our B right here. Um, and we could even draw it right here if we wanted to, but I'll just draw it like this. This is really just the same line. It's going to go down to the 10 kilo ohm resistor, which is going to go to negative 10 volts. 
From this though, we can see that this resistance is in series with this resistance. So this is going to give us, and I'll write it down here, it's going to give us 15 kilo ohms, and this is in series, right? Well, now with the node voltage method, if we look at the current uh, across here, we have 10 volts here, we have a minus 10 volts here. And so what we would do to find the current right here, we would set I equal to this voltage, our source voltage, 10 volts minus the other voltage, so minus a negative 10 volts. And this is going to be all over the resistance, which is 15 kilo ohms. But we're just going to keep it as ohms because we want to have it be milli when we do this. And so 10 plus 10 is going to give us the 20 divided by 15 is going to give us about 1.333 repeating. And so this, our i, is going to be equal to 1.3 like this. And we're just omitting units here for simplicity. So that's what our i is right here, 1.3. Now this i is going to be flowing through here, right? Now we want to solve for some voltage. Now we can see that this current right here is going to flow through a diode. It's going to flow this way and it's going to flow down here. And so we have 1.3 over this 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now if we want to find the voltage across this, we are going to set the voltage equal to current times resistance, which is 1.3 milli times 10 kilo. And this is going to give us 13. And well, if we have this V is equal to 13, and we have this negative 10 volts here, that means this node right here is going to hold the voltage of 3 volts. And we can check this with the node voltage method. Um, no voltage, if we wanted to find the current across here, we would just set it equal to the voltage, 3 volts, minus the, uh, the voltage here. So the source voltage minus the uh, voltage on the other side. So we'd have 3 volts plus a 10 volts, or minus a negative 10 volts, that's going to give us 13 over this 10k, which is going to give us 1.3. So it all checks out. It's not going to be exactly 3 volts. It's going to be about 3.3. And I have the author's solution to this right here. Uh, it's similar to how we went about it. And this is just a little bit more detail about the actual process and theory behind it. But we've done the math here. We found our V is equal to 3 volts. The last thing that we need to find is our I. So we found this. And this is our ID, too, that we found to be 1.3. So what is the I on this side right here? Well, the I right here, we actually know it. Remember, we set this diode to be off. And if the diode is off and we scroll up here, we can see that um, it's going to act as, if it's reverse biased, it's going to act as an open circuit. So I is equal to zero. We know this because our voltage has to be less than zero. And so if you're following along, uh, we know that our I is now going to be equal to zero. Again, because we have the open circuit, I is equal to zero here, since we assume that D1 is off. So I is equal to zero here. Now if we were to just go further and look at the theory behind this, um, we see that we have a voltage of three volts here. This voltage is at this point, which is still with this D2, because it's the same line. We've just turned it 90 degrees. So the voltage across this D2 is three volts meaning that the voltage across here is going to be 3 volts. And this checks out for this current, because to solve for it, this current right here, we would use the node voltage method at this node, and we set I equal to this voltage and this voltage over this resistance, and we get 1.3. Um, not exactly, though, because I, again, rounded, but this should be 1.3 volts, and this should be 13.3 volts. But if we were to have it like that, then we would get this 1.3. And so it all checks out, and that is how we would do this, assuming that the diodes are ideal. Remember, we need to assume both are either on or off, and then if that does not check out, we can assume one is off, one is on, and then if that doesn't check out, one is off, and the other one is also off. That's how we look about this problem.